ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Before we head into the, the second game, I did want to cover a couple of sexy stats for you guys. So give me mm. one second, uh, and just to go ahead and maybe see exactly you know what we're going up against. For Robert Morris, we mentioned they are undefeated this season. They went six and zero, and then seven and zero in each one of our splits, and they beat not only every single team in their region, but even after we reshuffled things, uh, didn't really uh, you know phase them at all. They took out Carlton and Champlain. Uh, Carlton's a school we've seen do pretty well in previous uh, seasons. And uh, of course, on the other side, for Concordia, not undefeated, but still pretty impressive. Uh, they had a better first half of the split than second half in uh, spring and finished at 9-3 and three with wins over George Washington and, of course, uh, took out UMBC on their way here to the round of 16. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been a long tournament. I'm having to, like, really dig down and think back to the beginning uh, of the, uh, the fall split. But uh, this, this is where we find ourselves, Fekes. Yeah, and, I mean, we're getting... Uh, like, you know, this is the round 16. We're getting more and more to the finals. Of course, that's how natural progression in tournaments work. But, yeah, we're getting these teams that are going undefeated, and they're starting to be, meet their very first losses or their very first really big challenge, and we're getting some really fantastic games out of every one of them. So, really excited as these as this tournament progresses, and we see who is in the uh, round of four and who goes on to Texas in, at DreamHack. Very excited for the CSL finals this year. Yep, and uh, just going to go ahead, update scoreboards, and we should be ready. We've got readies for, from both sides, so we can just go ahead and get into our second game. Once again, this is a best of three series, guys. With that noise, you guys know it's time for picks and bans in game number... Two. Here we go, two. Concordia. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what number comes after one, Fekas? And then, you know, back when I told my kindergarten teacher that I didn't need to know any of this stuff, then I... <laughs> that That's where that basic addition comes in handy. That's where you went wrong. <laughs> I, I knew it. Ah, I should have listened all along. But here we are, <laughs> game number two. Gangplank, the first ban here for Concordia. RMU, they've got that big one up on the scoreboard, but uh, they're going to have to defend themselves here in game uh, to uh, big pick for Turb was that Poppy, but that was enabled by a big ban on Trundle. So I think rather than banning Poppy here, it would have been better to say, you know, force that Trundle ban out because now RMU are freed up. They don't have to ban Trundle here like they did in game one. But they could also have it picked away from them. And then Gragas was also a ban last game as well. So mm -hmm. a lot of options coming out that Concordia has for a first pick. Uh, but like, like we talked, like you just mentioned. I mean, kind of whenever, whenever they first pick, they're giving up something over to RMU because having to force out that poppy ban. I mean, it's a good ban overall, especially when you have a reactive ban like Turb uh, against Turb, who played it very well in that beginning. But they do get the uh, Trundle ban away from RMU and accidentally Grog is up over for Dolene, uh, D Lee Wonder, uh, D Lone Wonder. Sorry about that on Concordia. Yeah, the Lone Wonder, uh, Wanderer. I'm not sure yeah. if, uh, what he is wondering or where he's wandering, but uh, the first know. pick on that Gragas. I don't think this was a big surprise. You noticed it banned in game one for this exact reason, uh, but going to let it through. Uh, Gragas has started to fall off uh, this current patch, if I'm not mistaken. I saw a couple of tweets on uh, Twitter. I think it was St. Vicious who was arguing uh, that uh, you know Gragas is not really as good this, uh, this pick, and even Monte Cristo was talking about how uh, you don't really see Korean teams play Gragas all that much anymore. Anymore. Uh, so maybe a little bit less picks in the professional scene here in the collegiate scene still growing strong and uh, Gonna see what the pick is against this Gragas now. We got to see a karma in game number one I wouldn't say that it was incredibly game-changing it did combo well with the Sivir, but Sivir was taken away in game one now RMU they're gonna say hey you guys, that comp was pretty cool Let's go ahead and see how it works for us and they get both of these AoE move speed auras yeah, that's going to be really huge for an initiation. I'm really anxious to see what RMU brings uh, as far as the top laner and jungler for to counter or to follow up these initiations. And yeah, more than likely going to be a Karma mid, I would assume, as uh, that's uh, um, I think that's where she's most popular at right now. Don't see him too many in the uh, support role. Synodic though did very well on the Morgana. D Lone Wanderer hovering over that Morgana may stay take that one away from Synodic and does so. Gonna stick with the Maokai in top lane, and Concordia, they're bringing a lot bigger of a front line than they did last game. 
Oh, that, that's exactly right. They did not have a front line at all. They had a Maokai, but that uh, was... Looks a... like, well, to see what RMU decides to do to counter this one, as they still have a... I mean, they do have the uh, the obvious, the, what they what they see in the top lane in the jungle for Concordia. We'll see what RMU decides to go with their support. It looks like they are hovering over a Braum. Going to see they also have a possible top lane. Oh, actually, uh, it is going to be a top lane and a uh, jungle pickup to still lock in for RMU. So we'll see if they bring themselves or bring, bring themselves another front line as well and try to match up the front line of Concordia. They have the Braum hovered over. It would be a nice lock in, and right. that is going to be what they pick up but a uh, graves locked in as well yeah really like the graves pick too because uh, what happens is when you have these aoe move speed buffs um you're gonna want to get pushed in so you build up all that pressure and then just sort of you know sp spring the slingshot and just run yourself right into the enemy team well as soon as you do that their job is going to be to counter engage and graves is a great jungler uh, i believe he's going to be the jungler in this case could be a top laner um it's a great, uh, you know, tanky jungler or top laner to both work well going in on the aggressive and then take the counter engage because he is a little bit tankier. Uh, so he can handle getting, you know, bumped around by Gragas or rooted out by Maokai. He'll still be pretty okay. So I like this very uh, sort of tanky, you know, end part of the draft here for RMU. Still have to figure out what Concordia is looking for. They've set up for a very strong front line and they still want to get that Kaylin. I don't think Kaylin is super good nowadays because she kind of gets run over and she's very bad at dealing with tanks. Um, even though she has the long range, uh, it just doesn't work well, you know, chunking through these tanks that really need something um, a little bit more along the lines of uh, maybe Jin's really good because you get that, you know, big burst damage and you can walk away, spend more time kiting about back. But even he's immobile, so probably needed a little bit more mobility, especially against that Sivir Karma combo. And that's the end of the draft for Concordia. Still questioning. Uh, Oriana did get some buffs, but I'm not sure if she is buff enough. To take on whatever this uh, you know, final pick is going to be, whether it's jungle or top lane, Graves, uh, pretty good flex pick for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on the Concordia pickups right now. They do have a big front line, but yeah, the Caitlyn, not really impressive last game, and they do have Colaire on Oriana. I, like you said, I think that's the most impressive pickup right now. Do have a nice ball carrier in the Twisted Advance or Body Slam from Silent Reaper or Gangs We Trust, in, uh, respectively. But on the other side, RMU, they are going with a Sejuani in the jungle for freaking Pope, so a lot different of a playstyle than a Lee Sin. Yeah, um, okay, so Sejuani also got buffed recently. Sure, she gets an auto attack reset on her um, Flail of the Northern Winds, and I guess that's pretty cool and everything, but still pretty questionable. It works well with this all-in composition for RMU because they're just trying to just run everything in there. You could have picked uh, a bunch of different junglers here. Ironically enough, champion that we didn't see, Aurelian Saul, would have probably been a pretty good uh, jungler to run in here just because he works very well. You start off you know, channeling uh, your uh, W way back in base, and you just run it until it's super huge as you uh, use that Sivir ult to just run right into the enemy team. Yeah. It's pretty hilarious. But in this case, Sejuani, not necessarily an S-class jungler, but for this team composition, works pretty well. Um, you're going to have a rough lane phase, maybe a little bit for RMU, because Freakin' Pope was the least in that was just crushing the early game for RMU. So this time they're going to have to take maybe a little bit more of a back seat but they do have Turb on a more aggressive top laner, so I think that's going to go much, much better for RMU. Because now, I mean, we, saw, we all saw what Turb did on a tanky top lane Poppy. Now he's got Graves in his hand, one of the strongest uh, top laners in the current meta. And they'd actually running double teleports as well, so a lot of map presence coming out from Robert Morris University against Concordia. And we'll see how they use that in about two and a half minutes whenever we get onto the Rift. But do want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Twitch.tv, Azus, ROG, and Brain Gear. Go check them out on Twitter, on their website, or just Google them. They're all there. And uh, my name is Joshua Fekas Quest here with Reed Rapid Melton. We'll be back on the Rift in just a moment.
I got to turn things down here a little bit as we get into game number two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a little bit of action to start this game off. Looks like uh, as we go ahead and switch it over to our in-game overlay. Um, yeah, the uh, big invade coming in. Don't usually see those, but RMU already starting out by putting on uh, the pressure. Yeah, there was a dark body landed out by Silent uh, from Silent Reaper onto Synodic, forced a flash out of Synodic early on, so very nicely done by Concordia, getting that early advantage, showing a little bit of a different attitude from the first game, and now, looks like we do have a big invasion coming out from RMU on the side of the, uh, on their mm -hmm. blue side, Concordia's blue side, we'll yeah. see if they catch anybody out, because Lee Sin 1TP oh, man. is walking up no, there, no, 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 don't do it, Lee Sin 1TP, no! It. He's gonna get shot up, he's gonna, oh no, nice dark body by Silent Reaper, that is Actually going to save the life of Lee Sin 1TP, but the flash is down for the Caitlyn in the top lane now. Right, so we did have flash for flash traded out there. Um, Synodic, he had his flash blown earlier, and now gets the revenge flash as he takes Caitlyn's away. Uh, the only other summoner spell used uh, at this point <laughs> is Smite, but yep. you know that comes off cooldown pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Now, Olair in the mid lane with his Orianna. See how he does with that one, maybe a Looking to do a little bit better with, uh, than he did with Karma, who now Nubsy is on. Going to show him how it's done. At least that's always the idea, and you hope that it works out because it's kind of a blow to the ego when you can't outplay your opponent as the champion they just played. But right now, Colaire taking quite a bit of damage. Very nicely played by Nubsy, forcing one of the biscuits out of Colaire in that early advantage. Synodic sidestepping a Dark Binding. It gets quite a bit of damage put back onto him, so... Back to business in the top lane. We actually don't have the uh, lane swaps. I mean, we do, but it's not the the uh, turret rushing lane swaps. It is a 2v2. Looks like it was met. Right. Well, the bigger thing is that there's actually just no champion down here in the bottom lane. And yeah, this that is, too. This is kind of an oversight. Um, you generally want to be able to capitalize on you know one lane getting experience. And I think this is uh, maybe something that you say, hey, let's quit the double jungle right now. Traditionally, you double jungle because you don't want to go into a lane swap. But due to the lane swap being scouted out there and countered by RMU, um, Concordia really losing a little bit by not having their jungler or their, their solo laner down on the side lane. Um, still, I mean, d both teams' double oh. jungles were equally as important, but look at this teleport up in the mid lane. It's canceled. Yeah, Nub Nubsey was out of mana, so he could not counter that at all. And yeah, the teleport was canceled as well. So that is a teleport down for Turb. Nubsey still has his teleport, so he can go back to base, come back relatively quickly. Now, that's exactly what he's going to do. Coming back with an extra Doran's ring, so a little bit of extra power. And he held on to his biscuits as well. I don't think he bought any. I actually did not see that one yeah. or catch it, but... That was super weird from Turb. He walked all the way down the lane, 
and then channel this teleport right in front of in ganks we trust maokai has got two ways to cancel your teleport man <laughs> you, you can't really get away with that you know we talked about you can't keep getting away with that earlier well <laughs> you actually just can't do that it's like a you know, if you're landing against the Garen, like, good luck teleporting out of that lane. She could, like, <laughs> run up to you and bop you, and it's like, oh, well, don't get that summoner spell anymore. But <laughs> Now, Garen, one of the few champions that still has a silence in the game, but not really a problem in the bot lane. But like you said, there is a Maokai. has plenty of ways. Twisted Advance, and, of course, the knockback as well from the, uh, the, the smash. Arcane Smash. Ar yeah. Arcane Smash. I knew it was an Arcane Smite. It's like, they would not name their ability after a summoner spell. But Arcane Smash. So... A little bit of misplay from uh, from Turb, and now he doesn't have that teleport. It's almost halfway cooled down, but still going to be a huge factor considering in Ganks We Trust does have his teleport, may want to use that in the top lane if the opportunity presents itself. We'll see what happens here. But so far, a pretty even game outside of the uh, a big chorus of, uh, of flashes coming out early on. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's go over the lane matchups and sort of determine you know, who's winning at least at this point in time. Uh, even though Nubsy did, uh, or not Nubsy, uh, Turb did to channel his teleport. That was a little bit weird. Bottom lane, he's in an aggressive matchup versus an early game Maokai uh, who didn't start with any sort of armor or Doran's shield. So uh, and Ganks We Trust is going to be on the back foot in that lane matchup. Nubsy, man, he's picking his karma pickup like a boss and he is doing really well in that lane matchup. It's pretty much a farm lane, but he's playing it aggressively and actually might be able to go oh in for the kill. Oh my god. Does go in for the kill. Very nicely placed on the edge of the inner flame. So, first blood does go over to Nubsy, and that's without Ignite. So, very nicely played by him, knowing the damage onto Colaire. Did you know that Karma's spells actually change their name? Oh, yeah, Soul Flare. Yeah, yeah. When, she, uh, when she inspires, the, or when she powers them up with mantras. So, it turns from inner flame to soul flare. And it's like, yeah. I, <laughs> well, that that's no, me, it, no, you don't need to change the name when you empower them. They're just an empowered version of the same exact spell. Uh, yeah. You got you know, inner flame that changes to soul flare. You got focused resolve. That's the tether that changes to renewal that gives you the health back. And then inspire changes to defiance when you get that AOE move speed shield on everyone. So, all right, man. Just, just trying to make Shoutcaster's jobs hard enough. <laughs> These champions with their six abilities. But okay. Pope showing his, oh, go on. Hold on. Hold on. The load or nice flash body slam into Nubsy. Nubsy with no flash, not able to pick that one off or get out of there. And so getting that revenge. Yeah, Colaire getting his revenge and trying to even out that lane. Very nice gank by D Lone Wanderer. All right, man. We got uh, you know game two. It's one one and uh, oh, nice binding there on the Synodic. Trying to keep up with that. Now, Freaky Pope's making his way to the top lane. He doesn't have his ultimate. There's not going to be too much coming out of it, but he does get the flash knock up on Silent Reaper, who counters Freaking Pope just outside of the Ooh. turret range with that dark binding. That could have been so oh, much yeah. more work. Yeah, Sejuani was totally dead if that was in uh, turret range. Great turnaround. Those dark bindings for Silent Reaper. Really going to make and break this excuse me, this lane, because, uh, you know, Braum, he's got, you know, a slow at range with that Winter's Bite, but unless you proc all four of those uh, Concussed Blows, you're not going to get a stun out of that Morgana. Always, always, always strong. I really hope, like, if Morgana... Back, back in my day, Morgana actually was the <laughs> subject of many, many nerfs because what was the problem with uh, Morgana is that you could stay... Uh, her skills dealt way more damage. Uh, they actually changed her uh, Tormented Soil so that it now does a lot more percentage damage over time. Before, it was actually just bonkers damage. So the problem was not that you would get snared by the Dark Binding. It's that one Dark Binding meant that you took half your health and damage thanks to a Tormented Soil soil and it was just a, a little bit ridiculous so nowadays much less damage and you pretty much see that in the support role um but uh, anyway back to uh what i was saying uh, dark binding is going to be a big big spell here for silent reaper you saw it able to counter that aggression from the gank coming in top lane and it's gonna be really good against this sort of move speed all in comp if you can hit your dark binding while the opponents are moving super fast then you get a big big reward because it just keeps their team from running at your face Running at your face is not what you want, especially if uh, whatever's running at your face is uh, you know, rather powerful, kind of fed. Hold on one second here. Colaire may be getting taken down a little bit. Half health through just one inner. Oh, Soul Flare. want to point that out. What? What's up? <laughs> no, I was just saying that, that really hurts. You can't underestimate karma damage. Uh, and oh, it should man. be pointed out that, uh, let's just go over a few stats here. 
for Karma, when she does mantra up that inner fire or inner flame to soul flare, um, not only do you get a 50% slow, but you also get a, uh, a uh, I think it yeah, doubles, or, yeah, it gives you 50% extra damage. You get 30% of your AP on its bonus magic damage for the uh, initial damage, but then you also get 60%, so it doubles that AP ratio. And now, oh, Nubsy going in. Just kidding. It was only a prank. <laughs> it's like it just backs out immediately. All right, well, now we are looking at pink wards getting cleared. Woo, super exciting. Level oh, six, yeah. though, on Sejuani meets the Freaking Pope. Uh, gonna be uh, making Kalara oh. use that cleanse. Hold on, in the bot lane, though, we do have a turret going down on the hunt popped, as well as a flash coming out from in ganks we trust. But now in the top lane, Delo Wonder knocking back Turb almost into a dark bind. It was a nice flash by Turb, but he is still in a huge amount of trouble. Does he have collateral damage? He actually oh, does Pope. not able to use it. Not in the position he wanted to, anyways. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Freakin' Pope taking out Cole Lair, and now Nubsy, is he gonna be able to take down the jungler? We, uh, Lone Wonder, hold on, out in the top lane. There's too much action. Oh, that binding right is it's sick! Very nice. Very nice 90 caliber net buy. Right, we're gonna hit a quick instant replay to see what happens up here in the top lane. Freakin' Pope just barely trying to sneak away there in the brush, uh, but Lee Sin 1 TP or Rapid X is gonna be able to take him down with a nice net into that so now we're just gonna take a quick speed up and now it's turb in a little bit of a struggle yeah he dodged the dark binding but he's not oh, oh my never mind he is because <laughs> he still had collateral damage up from before oh my god so turb knew no. what he was doing there he's not able to use the collateral damage before to escape decided to use it for a kill now very nicely played okay by it's turb. just like let me use my body real fast i gotta block this collateral damage and uh, turns out Caitlyn's bodies are not uh, going to survive <laughs> that cheat. That's, uh, that's that burst damage you're looking for. Pretty ridiculous. And another nice kill for Turb. Well, and I, it's his first. I, yeah, well, yeah, it's is his first kill. It's his first kill of this game, but he had plenty of kills last game. And I always feel like the damage just seems way more dramatic based on how far a Graves moves because it feels like the damage is so powerful that it's moving him back. I really like that feature. It seems really you know petty because it's all visual to me, but it just makes it so much more powerful and adds story to how much power is really behind that collateral damage. And uh, all that power just got transferred into the face of Decent 1 DP, leading him off the map. So very nice play by Turb. Dragon has been up. No one's contested it, though. Teleports are down for RMU, so... Concordia. Hmm. I want to check this one out, but they don't have any vision control right now. Well, to be fair for Concordia, they wound up getting their first dragon stolen away from them uh, last game, so they're probably going to be a little bit more hesitant. Uh, but it's actually started out here by Sejuani, and this is a little bit different uh, for Sejuani, not going for the Cinder Hulk, which you used to see just for lots of AoE magic damage. It's actually going to be a Rune Glaive and Ch or Runic Echoes, man. Runeglaive and Chance a while back, but yeah, Runic, yeah. <laughs> Runic Echoes, uh, really good to see uh, that picked up. You get a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. That's the reason that a lot of AP junglers are going for that instead of um, the Ascender Hulk. It just does straight up more damage. So, gonna see if Sejuani wants to come in for the flank. Glacial Prison is up. So, need to see if uh, what the next play is. Because in the meantime, while Sejuani's hesitating mid lane, top lane's getting pushed in a very, very oh, big yeah. way. The turret is not enough to stop that. They may get the turret, Concordia. Oh, they're getting greedy they for the turret, here. and this is not going to go well. Greedy. They do get the turret, but only the ultimate lands on a new wonder from Freakin' Pope. It's enough for Nubsy to pick up that kill, but now they are on the chase on the Silent Reaper, and they flash in headbutt. Well, actually, it's a boar rush coming out from Freakin' Pope, hitting them with those big tusks. <laughs> There's too many, too many flash, body slam, headbutts, all these sorts of things that can be pulled out in League of Legends these days. It confuses people like a little, uh, like people like small brains like me. <laughs> well, that's gonna work out in this specific situation for Concordia. The problem comes when you look at, uh, you know, uh, the big team fight that's going to happen, you know, mid lane or after this turret falls or later on when both of those, uh, the, the duo lanes flashes are down. Uh, you, you're just not gonna have a good time there. Uh, your carries are just gonna get run over, and it's not, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be happy town. So Nubsy will land that shackle oh. onto Colair, and just more damage after more damage. Not, uh, not a lot Colair can do with it, other than just keep farming that lane out. Yeah, you can throw the shield on him, and it gives himself some resistances, but it's not that huge. 
and Nubsy didn't have the Mantra up at that time, or else would have got a lot more damage down, turning that, that Inner Flame into Soul Fire. But still going to be able to poke out with what Inner Flame is there, so keeping up in the uh, pressure underneath that turret. And, uh, do, I mean, to uh, Colair's credit, though, he's actually winning in CS, losing out on the kills, of course, but still keeping up and uh, put, trying to put himself into this game as much as possible. But it's like the... Uh, Rift Herald being taken by RMU. Yeah, and it will go down there pretty easy. And they're going to give it to Mikey Moss. So that says lane phase is over. And with this Rift Herald buff, they're looking to put the push down. Now, they're, they're like, hey, we're going to get this big Rift Herald buff to push with our AD carry. And then walk into a lane with no turret, with uh, you know, with uh, all of their turrets gone into it. So when they push all the way up, they've got nothing to run to, and that means that if there's a counterplay up here to the top lane, the, it's gonna be a long way to run before they can get to safety. Instead, ganks we trust gonna need to once again trust in those ganks as he teleports in and loses half of his health. Turret is defended though, but yeah, at the sacrifice of his health bar, and it looks like D-Lone Wanderer, he is in the vicinity, but Freakin' Pope making his way to the top lane as well. This could be a 2v3 tower dive, but uh, we'll talk about it in a second. In the bot lane, Turb, he has a flash out of the Soul Shackles. Nice collateral damage, but he's in off. But hold on, there is a big ultimate coming out from Freakin' Pope underneath the turret, but no damage to follow it up. It was countered by a nice explosive cast. Oh, but he's going to be able to heal the full here if he gets one more auto attack, but way too low. Oh my god. Yeah, hold on, Nubsy gonna be able to trade here. Is he gonna actually trade? There's a flash coming out and flash of fires, fires back at Inner Flame. It's a lot of trading in the he, mid lane. It's he had his Mantra Focus Resolve up though, so I'm not sure why he didn't go back in for that. You heal for a ridiculous amount of health if you uh, you Mantra your Resolve on someone and they don't have enough to burst you down. Bottom lane though, Turb. Turb, that was a very nice dark binding lane and it's gonna allow Lee Sin 1TP to pick up that kill. He had the headshot available, he used it. Able to pick up the kill, and now here we go. Nubsy under turret. Uh, no, not gonna go for it. Just thinking about getting greedy, and even we might have some. Okay, no. Whew, recall, yeah. finish this, man. So much almost going on in this game, yeah. but uh, I mean, still it's four to four in 16 minutes, so we're doing good. A kill every couple minutes. Concordia taking control of the map, though. With these two, with, uh, taking down these turrets, they are three turrets to one right mm -hmm. now in favor of Concordia. So. Little, like I said, a little bit of a different attitude adjustment from the beginning, uh, from the first game, and they are able to control three times more objectives than they did in the first game so far. So they're on their way to maybe slow ball, slow, slowly snowballing their way into the mid game. See what RMU can do to try to counter it. Dragon is going to be up in a minute 30 seconds, and that the first dragon did go over to Robert Morris University. We'll see if they can secure the second dragon as well. And hold on, wait, so let's point this out. Lee Sin, uh, 1TP, once again, first item, Static Shiv. He really likes the Static Shiv. Yeah, it's still a little bit questionable, man. I don't know if that's really worth the wave clear that you get from it. You just lose so much damage. And even still, nice black shield. It's almost single-handedly saving Caitlyn's life. She's able to kite backwards, but can she kite far enough? There's the Lone Wanderer coming in, though. The Lone Wanderer is there, but so is Mikey Mouse. There is a two kills down over on the side of uh, RMU there. 2v4 now in the mid lane. Nice shockwave. Oh, oh my god. Man. They just got bodied by the big body. Lone Wonder <laughs> picking up a double kill, and now Concordia shoving into the inner mid lane turret. My god, very nice team, team coordination. Not one, but two wombo combos in the same fight. That's exactly the way you want to play it uh, as Concordia. Gragas, definitely the MVP there, setting up all that. And you know, we were talking about the static shiv, not a whole lot of damage there from Kaylin, but able to kite it out. Shout outs to Silent Reaper for that black shield, saving uh, that so that all the hard engage was already done. It was gone from RMU, and then they're the ones that got engaged on as Gragas came in and just turned that fight around. At no point in that fight did Turb do absolutely anything, and it turns out 4v5 is a pretty good fights to fight. Yeah, and they were able to pick up two turrets off of that and to establish even more map control. So it's almost the exact opposite of last game outside of that dragon. Concordia taking all the turrets and leaving RMU at one as opposed to last game where RMU were able to take all the turrets and leave Concordia at only one. And now if D-Load Wonder can steal this dragon, it may be just like last game, except in Concordia's favor. They're crowding around, explosive casting is not up. There it is. Coming out. Come on, there's the fight. Turb on the wrong side, but no, he's actually being alive. Psychotic though does go down. He needs to trust. Oh. Uh, uh, the big plot line. 
one TP now came in and coming in from the back lines. It was barely even actually not even touched. He got there late. Now it's not forty yet. Alright, well that team fight as uh, as great as it was, uh, once again MVP performance by Delone Wander, his Gragas is just getting in there. A lot of CC and just finding picks on players out of position. That fight, uh, really big uh, question marks above Nubsy's positioning. Uh, as a Karma, you know, you're supposed to be a little bit more mobile. He's got so much, you know, CS, so much farm, so much damage that he's really just got to stay back and poke that out. Uh, instead, let Delone Wander get in there. And keep in mind, Delone Wanderer, he's the primary engage here. So it's not like it's a big mystery. You see Gragas, he's going to run at you. Uh, it seems to be a little bit of a mystery here for Concordia as they just lose that fight handily. And now they're getting their inhibitor turret sieged. With a lot of Kaelin traps, going to make this engage a little bit more difficult. Freaking Pope, though, can turn this around with a big glacial prison. Yeah, and the traps are only on one side, so Freaking Pope had the opportunity to go on the other side, but did not feel comfortable going in as the uh, the damage is a little bit lackluster so far on the side of RMU. Turb, he hasn't been farming as much as he wants to, but neither has in ganks we trust. The only problem is it takes less to be a tank than it does to be a huge damage dealer, and Turb is finding that one out firsthand right now, but looks like there is going to be a little bit of vision control around the Baron. See if Concordia can establish control around that one as well. I mean, he's a Baron, right? He should be able to establish control around his own pit. <laughs> I always kind of wonder that, like, like yeah. why, why is he called Baron Nasher? Like, he's not, he's not like a human. I don't think giant void monsters really know about like, you know, hierarchy and monarchies and, you know, being barons of whatever. Maybe it just means he's in charge, but then why does he die so much? Maybe that's why he kills so many champions when they try to fight around him. Who knows? Well, it takes five people. Uh, or... Or just one Master Yi. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I was gonna, I was actually gonna make a Dignitas joke. It takes either five people or Dignitas plus one that's not Dignitas to really take out the Baron, so... I mean, the Baron, he puts up quite a fight. He's, he's, he's mystical. He's all powerful, all knowing. Maybe. Maybe. Well, <laughs> we'll see. He hasn't been taken down yet this series. So Not yet, no. We'll, uh, we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, probably setting up for that Sunfire Cape pickup on Freakin' Pope. <laughs> wow. Both junglers just dashing at each other. It's like, uh, uh, and nothing <laughs> happens. So, uh, some question marks there. Um, let's uh, see. The siege continues, and... Excuse me, just, yeah, look at those traps just set up all over the place. Some nice wave clear, though. Nubsy does get bound, but oh, at least in one TP. Thank you that turret for a second. Uh, this is going to be the go button here on this next wave coming in. Freaking Pope's probably going to pull the trigger. Uh, we'll be able to land a decently good Glacial Prison because, uh, you know, Caitlyn and Oriana are both going to be very far forward poking this turret. But getting past those Caitlyn traps is going to be where the question marks come from. Oh, Synodic! Oh, my God. Even down. as a tanky Braum with a big unbreakable door, you still take quite a bit of damage. Explosive cast, hold on. Gotta Here hit that go Concordia. button. Or the disengage coming out from Synodic. Very nice. They're just poke down. Concordia landing all of this poke. And there's a shockwave pulls turret back into Lone Wander in the front. Oh, big glacial prison coming out from freaking poke. Can RMU counter retaliate onto this one? Or follow up, I should say. Hold on, Mikey Moss, he gets stopped by a big... Uh, dark binding and now Lee one TP the health bars are very low on Corn Cordia if RMU can catch up they can pick up a huge victory in a team fight but like they can't chase I here they can't even go do Baron after the retreat um so many low health bars here on uh, RMU all these crit boomerangs Ugh, I, I I foresaw the dream in which it just bounced between all those champions but I gotta come in here <laughs> nobody wants to stop these I oh we got oh! the kill <laughs> what <laughs> That was on the very edge of the soul. Just player. the tip. Very nicely played by Nubby. My God. All right, man. Uh, yeah, go for it, man. That was. It, yeah, it, they quick kill him, whatever. Yeah. I don't know, man. In the immortal words of Ezreal, it's all skill. <laughs> yeah, that was a. Uh, that was quite a bit of skill coming up from Nubs. He just, just tire dive and. Uh, Ooh, just toss this real fast right now, right over there and then you know you pick up those maokai kills yeah. in, in 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 my world there's no way a karma could ever kill a maokai but in this world there's absolutely zero magic resistance built on in gangs we trust however he uh, the buff to maokai actually gave him scaling mr otherwise he'd have even lower than just 42 
Magic resistance. You, I, I mean, granted, he's not going up against a ton of magic resistance. There's like three semi AP threats from, uh, you know, freaking Pope. Sejuani kind of does magic damage. Synodic kind of oh. does magic. Oh man, look at that Lee Sin! Oh, the collateral damage. Turb able to pick up the Lee Sin 1 TP. Very nice pickup by RMU. Their uh, inhibitor turret is down, but now they are the on the offensive. Yeah, wow. Um, can't stand that close, man. Le I, when oh. I when I say, "Oh man, that Lee Sin just died," it feels a little weird because he renamed himself. I could just call him by his old name, uh, Rapid X, because uh, I mean, would be convenient, wouldn't it? Big fan of the uh, co-branding, but here we go. It's on the hunt. In gangs we trust, not not long for this world, man. Knocked up by the Arctic Assault. This is only inevitable that he goes down, but who's going to pick up the kill? If he makes it out of this, no, no, he's no, not looking no. there. out of all the people, they give it to Psychotic, or like he takes it. Yeah, not who you want to give the kill over to, but a kill nonetheless, and that is going to be a 35 second death timer, 40 second death timer on the side of Concordia. RMU may be able to take advantage of that. Oh, well, so we'll, we'll get a chance to see this uh, this pick composition like that, where you just bust your AOE move speed, run at a guy and kill him. That's the fundamentals here for RMU. They looked a little bit questionable, a little bit weak. They got their base turret taken, but now they're sort of in the driver's seat, just motoring around Summoner's Rift, picking up kills. And it's 10 to 7, there's a 4,000 gold lead, or 3,500 3, gold lead. There we go. Um, for uh, for Concordia, but it's all about the team composition. And as this game draws later on, it's not about which champions scale. It's about the team fight effectiveness of the five man group. And for RMU, they built this city on rock and roll, and they built their team comp on running around and fighting together. And they're just they're just so good at that. I I question whether or not there's enough disengage or enough. Uh, ability to just run away uh, for Concordia to make this not work. Now, they do need ultimate abilities, and all of them are up currently. Teleport in there for Engangs We Trust. Oh. This could be the last fight of the game. Hold on. There's a big Glacial Fisher coming out, but no one there to help out Cynotic. Big Arctic Prison coming out as well. Again, they need the damage. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Combo. Holy hell coming out from Concordia. Big Shockwave. Big Explosive Cast. No, Explosive Cast wouldn't even use. Big Body Slam, and now... Only one left alive to defend these Nexus uh, Nexus turrets, but there's no wave on the side of Concordia, so he's going. They're just going to back out, possibly go for the Baron here. And in the immortal words of Jesse Pinkman, I, I just can't keep saying this he enough. He can't keep getting away with it. He can't keep getting away with it. They they just get these <laughs> perfect combo combos every single fight. How are you gonna defend against that? They're the, for RMU. They're the comp that wants to run at the enemy and get their wombo combos off, but. They landed at these huge glacial prisons. Shout out to freaking Pope for landing oh. those absolutely massive ones. But uh, in the end, it just doesn't. Uh, there's no follow up for it. And man, beautiful Gragas play here by Delone Wander, setting up these Oriana shockwaves every single time. Yeah, he's been doing fantastic. And uh, props to Colair pulling the trigger when the gun was loaded in the face of the enemy. So. Very nicely played all around by Concordia. They take the Baron, they're taking objectives, and now they may shove one last push. It would take a huge team fight in favor of RMU to keep themselves in this game. But from now, for the looks of it right now, maybe seeing a game number three rapid. All, all I'm trying to say is, uh, Delone Wander, it's like RMU, they, they think to themselves, hey, wait a second. Where's that Gragas guy? <laughs> if, we, if we all grouped up right here, he could probably just body slam us and body us, and it's it, what happens every single time. So, uh, one last chance, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, with the way death timers work now, they're so long when you get late, this late in the game that if RMU lose one more fight, they're going to lose at least another inhibitor, probably the game if they get aced. And uh, with Baron buffed up, minions pushing into the base, once again, do or die. Freaking Pope, he's been great at landing these glacial prisons, but he's got to have the follow-up. And there is a little bit of power. I mean, there's actually, they have three damage dealers, big three, uh, three big damage dealers on the side of RMU. They're just not able to get into the position. They have so much power on the side of Concordia. A big front line as well. They're almost afraid to go in whenever these Arctic prisons land. So we'll see. Uh, glacial prisons, I'm sorry about that. But we'll see what they can do against this turret. That cannon minion is just so annoying. You see it pelting away at your turret. It does like 
I mean, it only does like what, like 20 damage per shot. I don't no, know. No, it's a lot more than that. It actually does about uh, 40, 50 damage. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's decent. It uh, is does... decent, but there's something you just can't do about because it it's out of the range. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't tank turrets, though, which can make it uh, difficult for dives, but there's the second base turret of the game going down. Freaking Pope with ultimate still available. He's got to look for opportunities to land that one, but he's uh, going to go for it. Oh, there's another big glacial prison. Can RMU follow up finally? Or there's another big shockwave. Colaire taking out turret. Psydonic going down as well. And this looks like Concordia's game to take now. You're going to pick out uh, <laughs> Mikey Mouse as well as Nubsy. And that is only freaking Pope alive. I believe that is game because there's a super minion wave in the base along with empowered minions. So we are going to a game number three between RMU and Concordia. They stayed alive for the first game. And uh, now we see who's really the best for the game. Both of them have had pretty high performances. Now number one, uh, the game number three, it's going to be do or die. Yeah, do or die, and here we go, out of game number two, which ends in an 18-7 win for Concordia, and into our third game of the night. And while we set that up, you guys set still, don't go anywhere, we'll be coming right back again with game number three in this best of three series. So you don't want to miss it, make sure to stick around and don't go anywhere. Against the wall It seems impossible But there's nobody else I want by my side To stand here with me To take the 